This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel, and thank you so much for tuning in this morning. I trust that everyone will have a wonderful and a safe day. And in the news this morning for December 8, 2022, man and a woman killed at a bar in Kingston. A man and a woman were shot dead in a bar at the corner of Maxfield Avenue and Richmond Park Avenue in Kingston yesterday evening. A third victim of the shooting was taken to hospital. The police report that the gunmen entered the premises and held up a man who was in the yard. The man reportedly ran into the bar DNM HQ and was chased by the gunmen who shot him inside the bar, killing him and the woman and wounding another man. The deceased man is said to have been from Tivoli Gardens. The police had a cordon of the area restricting traffic on Maxfield Avenue. Police flagged in 112 shooting deaths over 11 years since Indicom. 14 policemen are under scrutiny for their involvement in 30 of 129 fatal shootings over the one-year period ending June 2021. But more starkly, the same 14 have been flagged in 112 police-involved deaths between 2010 and June 30, 2021, according to records of the Independent Commission of Investigations. One of the cops has reportedly killed 20 persons in 11 years. The revelation was made in Indicom's 2022 quarterly report, which was tabled in Parliament Tuesday. The police oversight body said that the fatal shootings by the security forces remain at a critical high level in Jamaica. Highlighting key points in its report, Indicom said that the 129 deaths occurred in 110 incidents between July 1, 2020 and June 2021. All persons shot and killed during that review period were men. 64 of the 110 incidents, which is 58%, occurred in Kingston, St. Andrew, and St. Catherine. Given a further breakdown, the oversight body said that 250 police officers fired their weapons in the flagged encounters. A minimum of 1,950 rounds were fired at the 129 persons killed in the com reported. Data from Indicom also showed that a minimum of 1,374 rounds were fired in incidents categorized as a discharged of firearm missed target. The watchdog said that 19 of the 110 incidents were categorized as suspicious. Further, Indicom reported that 19 of the 129 men shot and killed had no gun or other weapon, with at least 308 rounds fired at them. In 74 of the 110 incidents, 89 firearms were recovered. The police oversight body reported that 17 of the 129 men were reported as being in possession of a weapon other than a firearm. Indicom also observed that no body-worn camera was sighted as deployed in any of the 110 incidents. In a retrospective look at the killings by the security forces, Indicom said that for the nine years preceding 2014, the number of security force-related deaths was always in excess of 200 annually. Indicom argued that while there was an observable and significant decline in the period 2014 to 2016, there was an increase in 2017 and 2018, and a subsequently significant drop in 2019 to below 100 deaths. However, after 2019, there has been a gradual year-on-year -year increase in fatal shootings. The police oversight body said it is often cited that the volume of fatal shootings is a police response to violent crime and for which robust action is necessary against the perpetrators. The commission pointed out that despite 3,105 security force-related fatal shootings from 2005 to 2021, the civilian homicide rate continues to increase. Indicom acknowledged that any armed and dangerous criminal and gunman must be lawfully confronted by the police in defense of self or others. However, Indicom argued that a narrow annual analysis demonstrates that the security force narrative of proportionality and necessity was not wholly accurate. It contended that in cases involving unarmed persons, those without a firearm, the mentally ill, crossfire victims, 
female persons shot in fleeing vehicles, unarmed escaping suspects, CCTV evidence, and the survivors of police involved in shootings continue to provide alternative accounts. Uncle believes a jealousy behind a suspected murder-suicide in Westmoreland. An uncle of 42-year-old dressmaker Alicia Smithson, victim of an apparent murder-suicide in Senior, a community on the Westmoreland St. James border, believes that, that jealous rage could be behind the tragedy. Police investigators have theorized that, that Simmonson was strangled in her bedroom by her boyfriend Robert Stewart, who was of a Cornwall court's address in Montego Bay, St. James, before hanging himself. About 3 p.m. on Tuesday, Simmonson's body was discovered in a pool of blood in her bedroom, with the hands bound to the leg of a bed and a bloody sheet wrapped around the, the neck and covering the face. Raymond Headley told the news he was shocked when he learned of his niece's death. I was at work on Tuesday about 2 o'clock, and my sister called her from the United States and said she called Lisa and she didn't get a response, he recounted. Headley said that he told his sister that he was a bit busy, but he asked a cousin to go by her house to check if she was home. Him call me back and say him not getting a response. Then Missy one of my church sister calling me, and she said she saw the grill open and the locks on the table, but no response, he shared. Headley said that he then asked her to take a look around. When the woman saw the company of other community members and went inside, they made the gruesome discovery. Them go inside and start look around and then see my niece with her hand bound, as she tied around her neck. And by the time I reached down there, Missy that as well. And by the time I reached round the back just to look, I saw the young man hanging from a piece of rope. So I called the police, said Headley. He described his niece as a quiet, soft-spoken, well-mannered and a hard-working single mother. This is the second suspected deadly domestic dispute in Westmoreland over the past week. Last Friday, the decomposing body of 39-year-old Karen Williams was discovered in a shallow grave behind her house in Mount Airy. Her 27-year-old boyfriend, Courtney Cooper, who goes by the name Junior, has been named as a person of interest in the murder investigation. He hails from the St. John's Road area in Spanish Town, St. Catherine. Jamaica gets medical supplies from the Republic of Korea. Medical equipment and supplies from the government of the Republic of Korea, valued at some U.S. $1 million, were on Tuesday handed over to the government of Jamaica. The donation includes bedside stethoscopes, operating theater tables, anesthetic machines, electrosurgical units, diathermy pencils, and incubators. They were presented at a ceremony held at the Ministry of Health and Wellness in Kingston. Speaking at the ceremony, State Minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Foreign Trade, Leslie Campbell, said the government of Korea will be providing additional supplies. There are items to be delivered later this month, as well as in January 2023, Bring in the total value of this latest package of assistance to U.S. $1 million, he said. Campbell said that the donation builds on the steady and the consistent support that Korea has been providing to Jamaica since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. To date, we have been the beneficiaries of medical supplies and equipment well worth over U.S. $2 million, he noted. Campbell lauded the government and the people of the Republic of Korea for their commitment and continued bilateral partnership. He noted that the two countries have partnered in the areas of health, education, culture, environmental protection, and energy. Without a doubt, we have proven that our solid and enduring relationship has tremendous potential for even greater collaboration, he said. In his remarks, Charge Day Affairs in the Embassy of the Republic of Korea, Ben Jin Lim, said that Korea's commitment to the government and the people of Jamaica has never been wavered. My government looks forward to the continued strengthening of our bond and bilateral partners and the friends, he said. Lim commended the Jamaican healthcare teams for their stewardship and the leadership during the pandemic. Jamaica's response has been robust as recognized by many of your international partners and the donors. Korea stands with you and is here to boost your capacity in the hope that your strong response continues, he added. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.